A while back, I said to the Lord, I've spoken to a lot of people, and there's a lot of questions with the people. Questions like, how long, God, will it take before you meet my need? How long, Lord, will it be before I have a change in my life? And I said, Lord, I will preach about that. How long will it take? And then as I was starting to prepare for this message, the Lord said to me, no, let's go back to basics. I'll talk about that a little bit later. So I'm going to have a sermon on that one of these days. But for today, the Lord said to me, speak about Psalm 23. And I thought, wow, Lord, that's the most popular psalm known in the world. But it's the most effective. Well, not most. The whole word of God is effective. But because it's well known in the world, it's got a huge effect on the people. So I want to take you back to basics this morning. Are you ready to walk this road with me? David was already old when he wrote Psalm 23. David went through a whole lot of challenges, a whole lot of difficulties, a whole lot of victories, a whole lot of joy. And when he sat down and he reflected upon his life, he wrote this poem, which is Psalm 23. And I thought, let us all, I hope it's readable, let us all read together this morning. I think all of us knows it. I'll just go a little bit down because otherwise I block the screen. So let's all start reading together. One, two, three. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lay down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare the table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Father, I just pray for your word this morning. As we go through this chapter, I pray, Lord, that your spirit will just move among us and that whatever needs to be said this morning will be said. And I thank you, Lord, for lives and mindsets that will be changed because of that. In Jesus' name this morning, amen. Okay. David unveils three stages of his life in this chapter with what God has done in his life. So David's relationship with the Lord in three stages. The first one is David's exclamation, which is, the Lord is my shepherd. Is the Lord your shepherd? Don't just say so, but you have to believe it, because a shepherd will never let his sheep Get lost. So the first was his exclamation, the Lord is my shepherd. The second one was his expectation. I shall not want. I will, I will fear no evil. That is what his expectation was. And then the last one was his exaltation which is my cup runneth over. Now, when people say to me, how long, how long, how long? My first question is when I read this is, are your, are your cup overrunning? Are your cup full? And I think that's why the Lord takes us back to this very familiar script, scripture in the Bible about a shepherd that looks after his sheep. We see in this, 
message that God is the shepherd and we are the sheep. So any time we refer to sheep, it is us. And when we refer to the shepherd, it is God. God has been named the shepherd early in the Bible already. The first time is in Genesis chapter 49 and verse 24, where Jacob called the Lord the shepherd. And I just want to give some references. New Testament also, there's a lot in the Old Testament. But even in the New Testament, in John chapter 10 and verse 11 and 14, Jesus clearly spoke of himself as the good shepherd who gives his life for the sheep and who can say, I know my sheep and am known by my sheep. So Jesus said he's a shepherd. And if the word says he's our shepherd, we have to believe that he is our shepherd. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 20 speaks of Jesus as the great shepherd of the sheep. 1 Peter 2 verse 25 calls Jesus the shepherd and overseer of your souls, of our souls. And then lastly, 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 4 calls Jesus the chief shepherd. I want to say to you this morning that there is a shepherd in your life. If you by any chance feel this morning that you are lost, look for the shepherd. There's a thing that I always see at some nurseries, which is always, you know, you get these nice little signs that you put in your garden with all these nice things on that, all these nice sayings. There's one that always grabs my eye. It says, when you can't sleep, do not count the sheep, rather speak to the shepherd. The shepherd is the one that will change your life. God is the one that will change your life. And the word of God says, I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. If you are with your shepherd, you will not want. Now, I see that want in two different words. Maybe it's because I'm Afrikaans. But the first one is, want is you will lack nothing. But the second one that touches me a little bit, and maybe it's wrong because I'm an Afrikaner, but I will not want, I will not stray off the path. It's a choice that we have to make. The choice is, God, are you my shepherd? And when I'm done this morning, I'm going to have an altar call for those that do not know the Lord, that wants to give their lives to God. But I'll first go through this. There is no if or but, nor even I hope so. It says, the Lord is my shepherd. It's so important. A shepherd does not follow, uh, uh, a shepherd does the following things. Protecting them from danger. Do we live in an age where there's danger around us? I want to say to you, you are protected. Finding good postures. postures. God will bring us to good places. Uh, Renier, God is taking you to a good posture there in Cape, wherever you're going. And I will have to come visit you at some stage there, I think. A good shepherd brings them to still waters. This was interesting to me. Do you know that the sheep will not drink at wild waters? When the river is fur- uh, I nearly said furious, but when it's rough, when the river is rough, a sheep is scared to drink. But the shepherd always takes him to the still waters. The Lord will bring us to our still to the place where He knows the waters are still, and the shepherd does not. Uh, a, a shepherd keeps them from straying. Do we stray easily in our lifetime? I want to say that you've got a shepherd that will prevent that. 
the most important word is my. Make him your shepherd. He's not, I can't say it's your shepherd. She has to say my shepherd. She has to accept that God is in her life, her, her shepherd. And because we say it's my shepherd, I shall not want. Say it after me. I shall not want. Listen to what you say. All of us most probably sit here and can think of something that you say I'm lacking. But if he is our shepherd, I shall not want. It's not just a saying, it's a declaration. It's not just a declaration, it is a decision that you have to make. So, what does it mean? I shall not want. All my needs are supplied by the Lord, my shepherd. I shall not want. I decided to not desire more than what the Lord, my shepherd, gives. Accept that which he gives unto you. Do not accept more of that. The psalmist is, the psalmist is really saying, because God is my shepherd, I have everything I really need. Do you have everything you really need? It's quite a difficult question to answer. It's not so easy. It's easy to say yes until you walk out of this door this morning and say, Lord, there's so many things I need. But you just confessed here yeah, that you don't need more than what the Lord will give you. It's a thought pattern that we have to change. With God, anything is able. It even says in um, Philippians 4 verse 19, My God shall supply all your needs according to His riches in glory in Jesus Christ. Not according to what you want, according to His riches in glory in Jesus Christ. So, so the Lord sustains us on a daily basis. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. If we look at this verse, I pick up a few things. But the thing that I picked up the most is the verse is rich with the sense of comfort, care, and rest. Is that not the three things we need so much in our lives today? To lie down in green pastures, the shepherd also knew the good places. Being a farmer, I will not put my sheep on rocky ground to sleep at night. They will not enjoy that. I would know to take them to the green pastures where they can sleep nice. I will know where to take them to drink water, to the still waters, so that I know they get their thirst quench. The Lord will know where to take you to quench that which is in your life. So just call upon his name and he will be there with you. So I'm going quite fast through this, but it's such a short, powerful psalm. There's so much we can say about every verse, but I want you just to realize that this morning, all of us are going back to basics, where we put our trust back into the Lord. He restores my soul. This was a very good verse for me this year. 2023, from Psalm 23, verse 3. He restoreth my soul. He restores my soul. I want to say that this year is the year that the Lord will restore your soul. We've prayed about a whole lot of points on that Friday evening. Everything's got to do with restoration. When God is in the picture, things will be restored. So, what does that mean? Other translations actually says... Um, he gives me new strength. That's the first thing that needs to restore, be restored. 
I always pray, Lord, restore my strength so that I can be strong in you. Do what I need to do. Stand here and speak to the people. He leads me beside... No, no, sorry. Um, God picks me up when I've fallen. He lifts me when the load is heavy. In my weakness, God gives me strength and power. He will pick you up. Restore has the idea of the rescue of the lost one. It gives me that idea. You know, they always say when one sheep goes astray, restore is rescue. When you go astray, God will rescue you from your situation. In Hebrews, the word restore, my soul, means to bring me to repentance. We have to get back to basics. Remember the course, repentance of dead works. That's what we're going to start with. I'd like to see as many as possible of you there at that course. Because we're going to learn so much. It's going to be so interesting. And the fellowship, I can't wait for the fellowship. But he restores my soul means to bring me to repentance. He restores my soul brings me, or he, when, he, when he does that, he brings us to our original purity. He will bring you back to the way that God has made you for the purpose that he's made you for a time like this when God has made you. Okay, so that's very, very important. If you are struggling with your call, call upon his name. If you don't know where to go, that's a beautiful example this morning from Renir. He prayed about it, and he's actually better off with the job that he's got now than the previous one that he would have gotten. But if you don't know your call, ask the shepherd, and he will lead you on his path. One of the, the, the things that we, where we make a mistake when we do it, try and do it ourselves, is you look inward too much and upward too little. How can I do it? How can I get that new job? How can I change the world around me? We look too much inside of ourselves instead of looking upwards to the shepherd that is there that will help us in all this. The Lord is my shepherd. Shepherd. This is what I read somewhere where they said a little girl, it didn't happen in our school, but a little girl was learning the psalm. And it says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And she said, the Lord is my shepherd, that's all I want. And I thought, let me just put it on the screen. Because sometimes that's all we need. No, let me change that. Always, that is all we need. That's all I want. Say, Lord, please help us in these times. We go to verse 4. Yea, through, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Now, this was very interesting for me when I read this, this verse. Shadow of death. Two things that really, the lights came on when I, when I went through this psalm. The first thing is, can there be a shadow if there's no light? I want to say to you, even in your Valley of the shadow of death, there will be a shadow. The death has got a shadow because of the light that is in that valley with you. Do you understand that? It is God that is with you. Wherever light is, darkness cannot be. But in this case, the Word of God says, though I walk through, not in, Though I walk through the valley of death, 
we are so blessed this morning to say that Olga is with God. She's not in this valley of death. She just walked through it. And she's with God now, rejoicing, having a whole lot of fun, while we are just feeling the emptiness this side of losing her. But she walked through, and all she could see is the shadow of death, because she's not dead. She is with God now. One of our foundation stones that we will learn about will be eternal life. We will have eternal life. Death has been conquered by Jesus Christ on the cross. We celebrated that last week. So do not be worried to be in the valley of the shadow of death because God is with you. That valley can be anything. It can be circumstances also. But I want you to be sure that God is with you. So I was thinking every time I look at a shadow now, I'm so thankful that God is with me. Every time I look at my shadow, I will be reminded that God is the light that works, walks with me. Not like we did uh, when the overseas visitors come from the USA and so on, we take them to the Kruger National Park and to the bush and we tell them about the shadow spider. Have you heard about the shadow spider? You walk past the bush where the shadow is and then when you pass, the spider jumps into your shadow and it chases you. And you should have seen these overseas guys watching their shadows when they pass a tree or so, walking through the tree's shadow. No, that's not the shadow. <laughs> We're just being naughty with that. But the shadow is because of the light of God that is close with us. I, I wrote here, it is a valley of the shadow of death, and it means not facing the substance of death itself, but the shadow of the death. So we're not facing the substance of that death. I will fear no evil when I walk through there. How many of you walk in our daily walk fearing everything around you? Good question. Because the world is crazy out there. But we should not live in fear at all. We can be cautious. We have to be awake and, and uh, don't be foolish. But we don't need any fear. Because wherever you see from now on, wherever you walk and there's a shadow, you know that the light is with you. So do not let fear over, overshadow you. But get rid of fear. Let me see. Saints does not walk in the valley, but through the valley. That's very, very important. Why do we have no fear? Because he is with us. His rod and his staff, they comfort us. Your rod and your staff. In the olden days, the shepherds had a staff that had a bend in the top where they could lead the sheep. But on their belt, they carried, the, the pictures that I saw on the internet looks like, uh, nearly like a baseball bat without the knob on the side. They just had a piece of stick, short stick, and that's what they fought the wild animals of. And God says that he is our rod and our staff. It means he fights our battles for us, and he guides us when we go astray. So, the psalmists say that this hope is in, uh, that we have in God, who will, and we've got that hope because He will guard us and guide us. Two words, guard us and guide us. And so, when I read that, I also think about, even when I myself say, how long, Lord? So we'll get to that message one day. How long, Lord? But for now, let's get back to basics and understand what God 
gives us on a daily basis. Your, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. That's what I said. My cup runs over. I was trying to, uh, to measure my cup when I, when I read this. And I thought, if, if that cup was filled with faith, how full would my cup be? If your cup was filled with faith, how full would your cup be? Very interesting. David gives a beautiful picture of this. The table suggests boundary. Prepare suggests foresight and care. Before me suggests the personal connection. So when he puts a table in the midst of our enemies, he puts boundaries around us. He gives us foresight and he cares for us. And he gives us personal connection. When we sit at a table and eat together, there's a personal connection. He's not far off. He's with us. I want to say that the Lord will put a table in, in front of your enemies. You will sit at the table with God in front of your enemies. Your enemies will not be able to overtake you because the shepherd is with you. And he prepared, not just put, he prepared a table in the midst, not at the side, in the midst of your enemy. He prepared that table in the presence of your enemies. The goodness and care suggest that the prepared table is set right in the midst of your enemies. The host care and concern does not eliminate the presence of my enemies. It doesn't mean enemies will not be there anymore. But what it does mean is that enables the experience of God's goodness and boundary even in their midst. When you say that God is your shepherd, it doesn't mean that all your enemies just disappear. Your problems disappear. They will be around you. But the more you trust in God, the less they will rule you and the rest, the less you will have fear in not knowing what your enemies are going to do with you. I want to say to you this morning that the Lord is preparing a table in the midst of your enemies. Take that and walk with that this week. It says there, you anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. I always battle to understand this verse. You anoint my head with oil. Why would that be in this verse? And my cup runs over. Now I'm going to start with first in, as a shepherd and sheep. In the olden days, there were no vets looking after your sheep or your, your animals. And when they go through the valley, because the postures are normally a little bit up on the hill, when they go through the valley, that's where all the thorns and thistles are. And when your sheep walks through that, they get scratched. They might trip on the stones in the valley and get cuts on them. And the shepherd used to take oil, healing oil, and wrap it on the source so that the sheep could be healed. That was very interesting for me when I, when I studied this word. And so the Lord will, our, inju our injuries, the Lord will anoint us with oil, and our hurts will be healed in Jesus' name. But he says, yeah, he anoints his head with oil. Now, in the olden days, when there was a celebration, when people came together to eat around the table and they came from far, their heads were anointed with oil. 
But that oil also had a fragrance in it. And I thought if it was me traveling far, most probably I would have sweat. And so you come to your guests, uh, to your um, host's house, maybe not smelling that like a desert, it's hot, it's sweat. But you did the journey, you, you made the journey, you, you, you came to your destination. And then your host anoints your head with oil that makes you new. All of a sudden, this dirty, full of dust guy smells like a, like a flower or whatever. And so he anoints your head to change your, dirt, your, your filthy life. When he anoints your head, it becomes, you become this clean smell, fresh. I know they wash their feet also and so on, but just by doing that, anointing their heads, their whole gest gesture or whatever the right word is changes because now all of a sudden they're different. The old is behind. The stinking is behind. They are anointed and fresh. God is going to refresh you wherever you are. I want you to be ready because God's saying this morning that he's going to anoint your head with oil. He will do that. And you will never be the same again because all of a sudden other people will, will notice you because you smell good. People notice you. Because your life changed, people will notice you. You will not be the same anymore. And then my cup runneth over. That one... I'm not 100% sure. My cup runneth over. And the only thing I could get there is how much of God do I have inside of me for my cup to run over? Maybe in those days, I was thinking about a lot of things. Maybe water was scarce or a good wine was, was scarce. But to have a cup that overflows means there's no shortage and so I want to say to you this morning, after the Lord will come and anoint you with his presence, I want to say to you, your cup will overflow. You will not lack anything. You will not want anymore because your cup is full to overflowing. And in the last verse, I love this verse. Especially the first word. Surely. Surely. Not maybe. Surely. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now let me say this morning quickly. Let me put you on the spot. How many of you are so happy to be in the house of the Lord this morning? In those days, it was the main event to go to the house of the Lord. Today, they say, rather do it online. We can sit at home, do our ironing, mop our floors with the TV loud, listening to Pastor Leon speaking. No. There's something that happens when we get together into the house of the Lord. In the Bible's time, His glory came down like a, like a cloud. Surely, 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 I want to say to you this morning, surely, not maybe, surely, goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. As long as the shepherd, as long as the Lord is your shepherd. If you go away, you will be grabbed by the thorns and the bushes. And you will maybe not have water to drink or pastures, good green pastures. But the Lord will come and fetch you as soon as you call. A sheep normally calls out and the shepherd can hear 
where he is. Because when the shepherd calls, the sheep hears his voice, and they, bah, they go crazy. And that's how the shepherd will find them. The shepherd will walk day and night to find those sheep. Or sheep. So, goodness is the stead, steady kindness and support that one can count on. That is the goodness that Psalms talk about. Mercy is the covenant word rendered steadfast love. His steadfast love never ceases. His mercies are new every morning. I want you to know that it is in these times that we live, we have to know that surely goodness and mercy shall follow us. Not surely the, the taxpayers, or the tax collectors will come and chase us. Surely we will, uh, or maybe we will lose our home or we will lose our business, or we will lose things that are ours. But surely goodness and mercy will follow you if the Lord is your shepherd. If you start with verse 1 again, if the Lord is your shepherd. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. These are blessings for the future. Let's see if we have to take that apart. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. To dwell means to, res to recite, to settle down, to be at home with. Is that where you are with your, con with your God and your King? When you pray, does God recite with you? Does he settle down? Does it become your home? Does this become your home? We've got a thing on the, on, the, uh, on the wall there. Your church, your home. Is this your home? It should be your home if God resides here, if he dwells within us. The house means family, household, the flock of the good shepherd, you are the flock of the good shepherd. This is his house. It's not my house. It's not Pastor Jan's house. It is God's house. And family, how this world have lost the purpose or the meaning of family. God's going to restore family once more in our midst, in our times. And the word forever means length of one's days. For all of one's life. For all of one's life. So the first one is for the length of one's days. That is while we're walking on this earth. That's the first meaning. The second meaning is all of one's time. It means when we die, we go to heaven. And we will be with God there. And... So if we look at this chapter, there's a few things that the shepherd provides, which God will provide for us. Firstly, um, all the peace. So remember all the peace. Provision, I have all that I need. Peace, I have rest from a weary journey. Protection, I have safety from my enemies. Providence, I have guidance in times of confusion. Presence, I have a companion when the way is lonely. And paradise, I have a home awaiting me in heaven. Worship team, will you come up, please? I want you to understand that this psalm starts with faith, and it closes with faith. The Lord is my shepherd. That's how it starts. And it closes with faith saying, surely, surely means that we have faith that that which, we, that which the word is telling us, that will come to pass. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me. And so, 
I want to say this morning, if you are that person or persons here in our midst this morning that has forgotten how great the shepherd actually is, I want to remind you of how great God is, how great His goodness and His mercies over us are. And if you, by any chance, do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, the one with, that will be with you in, while you among your enemies, the one that will give you goodness and mercy every day, if you do not know Him this day, I want to invite you to come forward as all of us stand this morning. Let's stand. I want you to come forward so that I can pray with you and so that we can dedicate your life to Christ. And if not, we'll just close in prayer. And I pray that God has put your mind to rest this morning. That you don't need to say how long. But all you have to say is, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. That's a powerful, powerful, powerful saying. So for me, the first verse in this and the last verse is my favorite in this chapter. For surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all of your days, which means forever. Father, I just thank you this morning that you have reminded me that you are the great shepherd who knows the pathway one of the verses say you will guide me lead me in righteousness father you know exactly the path we need to be on and i pray this morning lord for every person represented in this place that you will be the guide of the path on which they must walk I thank you for all the testimonies that we heard this morning, Lord. I thank you for everything that you are doing in our lives. But most of all, I thank you for the freedom that you've given me by your Son. And I pray, Lord, that as we leave this Sunday, that our minds will be focused on Psalm 23. And that this psalm will not just bring us back to the basics, but that this psalm will change their lives, Father God. I thank you, Lord, that lives are changed in Jesus' name. I pray for every boundary that is around us that's not supposed to be there, Father. I thank you, Lord, that you are the God that breaks that boundaries. And we know a good shepherd never walks behind his sheep, but always in front of his sheep. And we thank you, Lord, that we will learn your voice, we will hear your voice, and we will follow wherever you go, Lord. And we repent this morning, Lord, for asking you to follow us wherever we go. But we say this morning, Lord, lead the way. Lead the way in our lives so that we will be able to fulfill the purpose and the will that you have established in every one of our lives and that we will get to where we want to be because of following our shepherd. So, Father, we thank you, Lord, that this morning we know that everything we need is in your hands. But we ask you, Lord, Help us in this. Guide us in this. Even as we leave now, Father God, I thank you, Lord, that you, your Spirit will be with us. Your Spirit will guide us and your Spirit will protect us through all that we go this week, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.